Okay. And I just want to go over a couple of upcoming opportunities. Um, our high school youth leadership council, the application for this council is now open. So if you know any high school students that you think are, you know, really interested in helping their community, learning about climate change, climate action, sustainability, um, and are passionate to learn more and become activated, please let them know that this is happening. We'd love to see them. We'd love to see, have them join us. Um, also, our first in-person training of the year is coming up. It's on air quality and environmental justice. We're super excited about it. it we're doing it in partnership with SELF. Um, it's all about air quality monitoring. You actually get air quality monitors for doing the training. So you can kind of really activate your students in your school, learn about the air quality surrounding your school and learn how to take action with that data that you're gathering. So super excited about that. That's on October 12th. Um, you're eligible for CTLE credits by coming to it. So um, learn more by going to our website. And then finally, our sustainability hub, our resource portal has been kind of revamped, rebranded. Um, so please visit our hub to find out more about our office, all of our upcoming opportunities, grants that are coming up, um, opportunities for partner organizations, all that good stuff. So that's what I have to share with you all. And then I'm going to hand it off to Sarah. That's going to be so lovely talking to us about climate teaching. So thanks, Sarah. Welcome. Hey, thanks, everybody. Thanks for being here. Um, I am excited to talk to you about the idea of um, climate, the climate teaching. I was just saying before we started the presentation that Three teachers that have already run, developed and run one of these at their school are not here to help me today. I have some of the slides uh, that they have shared about their experiences, um, but we will, I hope, be able to also put you in touch with them if you have specific questions about the ways they implemented a climate teaching at their school. I'm going to share with you today, like I said, their slides, a lot of what went into us developing this idea, our brainstorming. Um, that we came up with is we started to think what this could look like in schools as diverse as a, an elementary school, a District 75 school, an advanced high school. So I'll start by sharing my screen. If you uh, have any questions, feel free to interrupt me or drop them in the chat. Um, Eliza, I think, is going to be monitoring that and will let me know when there are questions. So without further ado, I'll switch over to screen sharing. Okay. So first, just if you're interested, uh, I did develop kind of a note catcher. This is a document. Eliza is going to drop the link to it in the chat. If you wanted to make a copy of it and just record anything that comes to mind as we're talking about this, what kind of time frame you feel would work best for your school, I saw Amy share in the chat before we even started that she is a really supportive administration and a lot of other faculty members who would likely be excited about something like this. Some of you might be working with an administration that might be kind of more uh, difficult to work with around a climate teach in and you might find some of the smaller activities would be more appropriate for your school. So just this digital note catcher gives you the opportunity to record your thoughts as I'm sharing this presentation. Feel free to use it if you think it's going to be uh, a good way for you to keep track of the information I'm sharing. How do you move the toolbar, everybody? It's right over, there we go. Uh, feel free to use this little note catcher if it's gonna be a good idea for you to record some of the ideas that are gonna be important to you, some of the things that stand out to you um, as I move through this presentation. And again, that link should be in the chat and everybody should be able to make a copy of that document. Okay, so what is a teach-in? This is actually a term that was developed more for use for big events on college campuses, but a teach-in, broadly speaking, is used to refer to an educative, interactive forum where people with multi many different points of view, people from different backgrounds, all come together to discuss one topic in depth. 
Um, sometimes it includes guest speakers, maybe it includes some hands-on activities. They are definitely meant to be participatory. Debates might be part of a teach-in. They are meant to be empowering and they are meant to engender specific actions, action steps after they occur. Uh, so all of this was originally used to refer to a teach-in, and there have been many teach-ins that have taken place on college campuses uh, for many years. But when we think of a climate teach-in, sorry, we want to use that teach-in model as a guide, but develop it so that it fits with a K through 12 school model. So we want to create a menu of short-term but intensive climate education opportunities that could take place in any school in New York City. So we could see these as lasting for a portion of the day where every student in the school is participating in some climate-based education project or taking place over the course of an entire week where your whole curriculum for the week in every class from ELA to math to music has some element of climate education built into it. We are looking to be able to provide you with the curriculum you would need for every teacher in your building to run that sort of intensive long-term climate teaching. But we're also looking to be able to provide you with those short-term sorts of activities you could do over the course of a half day or a full day of a climate teaching. We are hoping that this sort of intensive engagement will help students remember what they're taught better than they would with a scattering of climate-based lessons uh, in sixth grade science and then mentioned again in ninth grade living environment, but never taken outside the science classroom, never uh, referred back to in multiple subjects or across multiple years. We wanna create something where kids will, when they graduate from high school say, oh yeah, I remember that climate lesson. And you know what? I'm gonna think about having less meat in my diet. Or I think our neighborhood really needs some more green space to help keep it cool. And I'm gonna work with some other people in my community to make that happen. We feel that a climate teach-in is an outstanding way to create a memorable experience for all learners in the DOE. So as I was saying, we have a bunch of things that we hope will support you if this is something you're interested in taking on in your school. We've developed sample schedules for half day, full day, and multi-day teaching programs at every grade band. We've uh, created lists or resources that can easily be incorporated into your plan. We've got some models of climate teachings that have already taken place. We're providing you with access to our experienced teachers who can speak to what worked and what didn't work in their schools, provide ideas for uh, bringing the administration on board, bringing your colleagues on board for a big event like this, or even a small event. Um, we can provide feedback on your proposed plans. We can identify resources like uh, guest speakers or field trips. We have so much that we're willing to share and all you have to do is reach out to us or just look through the links and other things that are contained in this slideshow, which we will share with you at the end of this presentation. So everything I'm sharing with you today will get shared with you at the end of the presentation as well. So uh, to begin with, in an elementary school teaching, they held something called an Earth Spirit Week. Uh, I love the idea of each day having a theme. They worked ahead of time to announce what those themes would be, and they also coordinated with the Office of Sustainability's plastic-free lunch day. So they had that nice alignment of activities to promote their Earth Spirit Week. They started their day Monday as No Plastic Monday. So not only was that announced ahead of time, students were reminded that this was the theme of the day and No Plastic Monday. And I believe this was also the day of the plastic free lunch at their school. So they really worked on taking uh, or making sure that students were aware of the environmental drawbacks of using too much plastic. Uh, not entirely a climate focus, but a kids have a hard time often in separating climate change from other environmental issues. And it's okay to engage them at whatever they're most interested in to thinking more about the world around them. You'll see then it's easier to broaden the scope or maybe 
narrow the scope is a better way to think of it, to have a, a more intensive focus on climate issues in their community and beyond. On Tuesday, they encouraged students to conserve water and gave students some real action steps they could take at home and in school to conserve water resources. They did a trash pickup around their school on Wednesday. So they actually had students taking part in a hands-on activity to make their school's environment a better place. They did some planting in the classroom on Thursday and talk about, talked about ways that plants could uh, both absorb more carbon dioxide and actually have some ability to clean the air. Something you'll learn more about if you participate in self or self air quality uh, PD for teachers. And then they, on Friday, tried to do a, uh, a lights free day in the classroom. So encouraging teachers and classes to keep the lights off as much as possible while they were learning on Friday. They also did a walk. They created posters and did a walk around the school, their climate activism walk, which I think is uh, coming up in a slide in just a minute. There's a link to that call to action video here, and I think I have it on my next slide. So again, these are the activities they participated in in more detail for each of those themed days that I mentioned on the last slide. So they worked ahead of time to develop this schedule of activities. Students were aware, parents were aware of the schedule activities for this week. Uh, here are some of the actual activities they engaged in. Um, they did, uh, I think that the, and I apologize, this was from a teacher who's not here today, but I believe the ones labeled activity A to B and activity E 3 C came from uh, Solar One. Does that sound right, everybody? And, uh, they mapped out a garden plan that had kids share their ideas for what they'd wanna do in their garden. At school, they used recycled items to build bird feeders or planters, really a lot of neat hands-on activities to get the kids thinking more about their environment. And now I think I've set it up so you'll be able to hear the sound. We'll watch a little bit of the video that was created by Erin at PS. 193, I think is her school, but I think it's shared in this video. Come on. Save the earth. Save the earth. Yes. I'm going to pause. Can you guys hear the sound? Eliza, you need a thumbs up? Yes. Thank you so much. We, yes. Cool. Save Thank you. the earth. Save the earth. Yep. Save the earth. Woo! Save the earth. Yes. Hello from the children of planet yes. Earth. are so cute. I love this activity of having them sort garbage, really hands-on, memorable, uh, something that I hope would stay with them as they continue through school, knowing which type of trash goes in which bin. And then they took it outside. The kids made posters about what they'd learned and they paraded around the school. Uh, some parents, all their parents were out there with the kids.
one more thing you can see from this video is that Erin also has the oldest students in her school helping with the younger students at her school. So they partnered up classes. They had, I think, the fifth graders walking with some of the kindergarten classes. Uh, I think that's a great partnership too, a way to have the kids working together for a common goal. So this video in its entirety is included in the slide presentation that we'll be sharing with you. Um, and now from that adorable elementary school, let's talk about some of our high school kids and the kinds of things that we can do with them. This is from uh, Elisa Levy, who is at the High School for Climate Justice. They held a climate teach-in for a full day, every class, every period. The one period or the one subject they weren't able to work with was their uh, gym classes. So kids who were going to gym had regular gym classes during their planned period for that. And that was just a logistical thing with her school. Um, the gymnasium doubled up classes. They didn't have space to take those kids somewhere else to do the, the any classes other than uh, gym at that time. So you can see though, for every period of the day, they had a planned activity that every student in every class was taking part in. They worked with students to plan this climate teaching. I love that idea as well as having your students, this was the green team at the school contributed their ideas to what they thought kids needed to learn about, what they thought the students would be most interested in. So involving students in the development process can really make your teaching more meaningful to the rest of your student body. They started with this great video uh, from John Oliver from last week tonight to introduce the idea of carbon dioxide increases in the atmosphere. Something like this for older students can be a great way to grab their attention. Usually this isn't a program I don't think that many of our students are watching, but he is very funny. I think for everybody students of people of all ages above high school age can or in a high school age can enjoy John Oliver. They chose to have Zoom assemblies. So uh, Elisa worked with people that she already knew, connections she already had to set up some Zoom assemblies. So students in every classroom were participating in the Zoom meetings with environmental experts from outside of New York City. This is something that people in the climate education leadership team, climate teaching committee would love to help you with. If you don't know anybody who's working in a field that's relevant or anybody that would be comfortable speaking to the student that you work with, then we can help to make those connections between experts in the field, or maybe uh, we have the great resources of our student committees too. So older students in high school in New York City who might wanna share their knowledge their ideas, their passion for the topic with your students. We can coordinate these connections with your classrooms and it's a great way for one person to speak to a large audience at a time. One thing that I've worried about with my school is that our auditorium is kind of trash and uh, having somebody come in there and speak to all our kids at once could get chaotic. Not everybody fits in the auditorium. You know, last year we were so worried about COVID related issues this year. I feel like our students and our faculty are a little more relaxed about COVID protocols, but maybe that's still something that's really nagging at your colleagues, at your students, at, at you, and you wouldn't want to pack everybody into the auditorium. We can set up one of these Zoom assemblies so that every student gets to experience the opportunity to interact with a guest speaker without all having to be in the same room to do it. Uh, she had a great quiz that she created, and the link to that will be shared in the slideshow. So this Kahoot, every student took part in this Kahoot in their classroom, and teachers, no matter if they were the ELA or the Spanish teacher or the math teacher for that period, ran through this Kahoot with their students. The teachers didn't have to do any of the setup. All they had to do was go through the Kahoot with their kids. Um, she had students write letters to their representatives. I believe this came at the end of the day. Once they had gone through their learning about climate change, their action step was to create a letter to a representative asking them to support more climate education, um, greater interest in climate justice, 
uh, they had a few different letters to choose from, um, and they sent these letters off to Senator Chuck Schumer and Senator Kirsten Gillibrand. There's a link you could follow to do that, uh, to write to your representative. Um, you could write to a local congressperson. You could write to the mayor. They chose for their action step to be this letter based on the learning that they did to encourage some sort of change in their communities. This is the biggest hit of the climate teaching, uh, according to Elisa. Um, they got the hydroponics kits from New York Sunworks. I'm actually not sure if these are still available this year. If anyone's worked with Sunworks, they provide great resources to schools. These kits were for sale. I think they were $12 each. Um, anyone wants to jump on out loud and confirm that? Nobody knows. Don't know the pricing of the yeah. kits. And I also can't guarantee that they are available again this year, but a similar activity it would take a little bit longer to pull together the materials to do something like this without those Sunworks kits, but definitely having kids start a plant growing in the classroom uh, or having something they can bring home and start growing at home. It's just a great way for them to start thinking about the value we get from plants, from green spaces in our urban environment. And very hands-on, very fun, and they get to bring something home as a result. Uh, this is from Deborah Rausch, and I am trying to look through, I, I can't remember what school she's at. So again, somebody jump in, they know. She's at Worldview High School in the Bronx. Thank you. Hey, Meredith. Hi. So this, uh, another high school, they had a door decorating contest with a focus on in reusing materials. So a recycled door decoration. I love the one that's pictured here. I can't imagine they all look that nice, but I'm coming from a middle school environment where our doors only look good when a few of our most dedicated and precise students take over uh, in the rooms of dedicated and precise teachers. They had a pretty, um, you know, a morning announcement each day of the week with just a little nudge towards thinking about environmental issues. I think these things would be so easy. Like what a great threshold activity for a school whose administration might not be all that excited about engaging in a, a full day climate teaching. No big deal. Start your kids thinking about it by having an Earth Spirit Week. Uh, Monday was bring and use a reusable water bottle all day, maybe all week maybe all year. Tuesday, they had asked students to wear blue or green for Earth Week. Um, they did this pledge to action where each student, let me see if the next picture, each student made a pledge to do some action that would be better for the environment and or to reduce their carbon footprint. And then uh, they wrote those pledges on a leaf and stuck that leaf up on this multi-species tree in the hallway. On Thursday, they also had some of the New York Sunworks hydroponics kits and they worked with their existing green team and asked students to come up and plant in those hydroponics kits at lunchtime. And again, Friday, that same one we saw before, keeping the lights off in the classroom stay. Be bright and turn off the light. So while the original idea for a teach-in was this broad scope, simple activities like this, just to get kids thinking about it, it's a great way to open the door. We gotta get our hands on more of those New York Sunworks kits, huh? Here is another set of activities. These come from Adam Zaid at the Queens School of Inquiry, and he has shared a Padlet that he put together. The link to it is here. I'll click on it in just a minute, but let me explain a little bit what he did. He did a teacher teach-in. So they have, I think once a month at his school, a half day teacher PD time. And his administration is always eager for things to share with the teaching faculty during those half day blocks. They are uh, eager for teachers who wanna prepare and present. Um, things during that time. And so Adam, instead of presenting to the students, had the students help him plan 
what to present to the teachers. So he worked with his school's green team to develop a multifaceted presentation that he delivered through a Padlet. So it was hands-off. Teachers now, I'm switching to the, um, to the Padlet link itself. Teachers worked through the steps of this Padlet on their own. Uh, there's a 12 minute talk for me about why teachers play such an important role in uh, reducing the future impacts of climate change. We can do more by reaching our students and getting them thinking differently about the future actions that they will take than almost any other action we take. So we can have a greater role in reducing future carbon dioxide emissions by teaching our students about the importance of reducing their future carbon dioxide emissions. Um, the Yale program on climate change has so many resources that you can share with your students. If you're working with high school students, the maps are spectacular manipulable so you can look at data from different places, data from different groups of people, but even the presentation for middle school students can be really useful. Looking at maps is a picture form of data, is a great way for students to engage with complex information in a way that all most learners can understand. So again, this link is there for you. Um, has some great ideas. You could do, you could run this Padlet with the teachers at your school. You could pick out different pieces of this that you think would work best with the with your colleagues. So that was a Padlet developed by Adam at the Queen School of Inquiry. He has made it available for you to copy and use however you see fit. Just like um, Elisa started with the uh, John Oliver uh, video, Adam chose to start his with a message from the UN Secretary General. Sometimes it can really help to engage a wider audience if you start with a presentation, a well done presentation from somebody who really knows what they're talking about. So some other opportunities provided through the DOE that we all have access to that can help students think about climate action environmental action in general, and maybe climate action in particular. The Microplastic Madness is available as a screening um, to, is that available currently? Meredith, I don't know if you can jump in on that again. Do they kind of open a window of availability in the spring? You're talking about for the screening? Yeah. Yeah, yeah they, 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 yes, they will be. And I know that their cafeteria culture is gonna, um, also do stuff sooner, uh, especially given the fact that plastic free lunch days are now scheduled for to happen each month. So oh, yeah, starting yeah, yeah. in October, so October, there's a November date, uh, which is a nationwide date, just so you know, um, and then one for December and January, the, the other months are expected to be scheduled. They're just not yet. So yes, that's great. Yep. Cool. Um, and again, all these links, if you're interested in finding out more about them and thinking about ways you could incorporate them into a climate teaching at your school will be available. I think maybe they're getting posted in the chat right now. So um, we also have some activities that have worked in D75 schools. Erin Laraway teaches in a District 75 school and has modified some of our ideas for a climate teaching that would fit best with her students. I think it's a D uh, D75 high school that Erin works with. Um, and these are some of her suggestions. These are not active links. So we'll have to check in and see specifically what lessons she has here. But I know after I go through a few of these slides, she has a couple slides that are just full of resource links. And I think most of these are targeted there. So she suggests one lesson per day, focused on climate education, repeating ideas, repeating lessons, building on the previous day's lessons, just so students are frequently um, exposed to climate education opportunities, not just a one-off lesson, but things that they can really build their understanding of over time. She recommends native species as a great entrance point for getting students to think better about the environment and an excuse to get your kids outside and interacting with the world around them. 
She suggests taking students to a local park or garden, talking about pollinators and ecosystems, and recommends the Brooklyn Botanical Garden as a great spot to identify native plants and some of the pollinators that they rely on. She developed a native species scavenger hunt and she has picture symbols and actual photos. So that's gonna be our next two slides here. Here's a picture scavenger hunt with actual photographs of some native species where kids could mark off when they've seen one of these things. She has stampers that she uses. So kids, when they spot one of these things in their environment can stamp the picture or in this case can collect data about the number of times they see a bee in a walk around the school or the number of times they see a bird. So students of different abilities should be able to collect data from their environment using something like these cards. Um, she also did a found object scavenger hunt and created these posters for her classroom. So collecting objects when you're outside, bringing them back into the classroom. She has that little no pollution screen. I bet that was the easiest item to find was some pollution in their environment. But students were searching for evidence of these things and then creating this sort of 3D uh, scavenger hunt result poster. Here's some of the kids working on doing some planting in the garden. Um, they, Erin uh, said, just absolutely loved this activity, talked about it constantly after they engaged in it. So don't be afraid to bring your kids outside and really get them thinking about the world around them and how they can make that world better. She also has done work with food waste prevention in her District 75 classroom, as well as water waste prevention. So students with uh, all types of abilities can manipulate things. She set this up as a Pear Deck presentation and kids were able to move objects around on the screen if that was easier for them than actually manipulating physical objects or pointing to where they wanted things to go and working with paras or with their, their classmates to uh, create this Pear Deck presentation. I actually have not used the World Wild Day Fun curriculum, um, but they have this wild classroom PowerPoint presentations that I've heard are really easy to just download and use in your class to start kids thinking about some environmental issues. Just like we saw with the elementary students working with kids to help them learn how to sort uh, recycling from garbage in your classroom is a skill that will, I mean, my the teachers in my school could stand to go through this activity. Uh, we are failing at recycling in my building. And I know I've heard that from many teachers and there's blame to go all around, whether it's our kids, our teachers, our custodians, we still aren't doing a good job of it, but the best way I think to get kids or to improve recycling in our schools is to get our kids out there as the enforcers of good recycling practices. Once the kids are paying attention to what teachers are doing, to what custodians are doing, uh, they're gonna start making their voices heard. And the first thing that has to happen is they need to know what goes where and why it matters. So here are some resources that we've developed as a climate teaching committee. The very first one, the climate teaching brainstorm, I'm gonna take you there now on the screen, but I think that link is also getting dropped into the chat. This was our very first pass at what we wanted to do as a climate teaching. We were coming up with ideas from all over. Who do we know? What field trips are good? What uh, activities have worked in our classrooms? Who could come to a career fair and what kinds of careers would we wanna have represented? What sorts of workshops with outside experts could we bring into our school? So this is literally a brain dump from six or seven people on the climate teaching committee of what we thought of when we first started thinking of a climate teaching activity. Some of these things I hope will trigger new ideas in you. Um, some of these things will be like, ah, that would never work in my school, I'm sure. We had teachers who taught elementary school, middle school, high school, District 75, all contributing to this brainstorm. So look through these ways. Some of them have links. 
Some of them have been promised to have links. Like I see right here, UHI activity. Sarah, happy to provide a lesson for it. There's no link, but I'm not Sarah. And I would love to talk to you more about urban heat islands and how your students can collect data on that and then propose solutions to cooling off the hottest places in your community. Um, here's some activities that would work well in a humanities class, or here's some things you could do in enrichment classes. The recycling relay race where kids have to run across the gym, drop the item into the correct recycling bin, return and tag the next person on their team. It's a great excuse to get kids running around in gym class and thinking about the environment a little more. Here, SunWorks hydroponic kits, $15, maybe outside the budget of some of our schools, but we could do something similar using just plastic cups, a little bit of saran wrap, and some seeds you can get from the garden store. Um, we thought about family and community activities. So if you wanna go beyond just the work you're doing in a classroom on a given day, if you wanna include a family science night or we do a family science day on a Saturday, how could you connect the climate teaching activities to things that are taking place beyond the classroom, outside your classroom? So again, this was our first pass at a brainstorm. There's a lot of ideas here. There might be some you'd want more detail on. If you're looking at this list and you're thinking, I'd love to know more about that, then uh, send an email to me and I'd be happy to share what I know or put you in touch with the people that could. I also want to share the second link that's here, which is sample teaching ideas. Some of us from the teaching committee created a schedule for different climate teachings. And I think if uh, you've gone to this document, each of these links should take you to another document where a schedule has been created. Not all of them are completed, but all of them uh, can be further fleshed out with my help or the help of other members of our climate teaching committee to do teachings of different lengths. And this is actually where I got the idea for the uh, a climate teaching from a book called The People's Curriculum for the Earth. In the intro section, which I generally skip over in most books that I read, uh, there was this little summary of a climate teaching they ran in their school focused on energy. And they dedicated a four day school week. So it was a short week. They had, I think, Monday off. They did four days of activities. Every student in the school, every class they went to was working on activities related to the environment. And I thought, what a great idea. We should do that related to climate change. More links here to provide you with helpful information. Please check those out. And uh, now some of the resources I mentioned before, a lot of these were pulled in by Aaron. So there's so many things here. If you're just trying to think of how you can incorporate more environmentally themed lessons into your current curriculum, all of these are resources that are either ready to go or great ways to, uh, or give you suggestions about ways you can expand what you're doing in your classroom to include more climate education. I think that that is my last slide. Uh, we've got about 15 minutes left and I'd love to take time to answer any questions you have about challenges and successes, about the resources that I've provided here, about ways to get in touch with us or uh, try things out going forward, ways to stay in touch. So um, I'm gonna stop for a sec and give you a chance to post questions in the chat or ask any questions that you have. And if you need any of the, the resources posted again, I know that was a lot of links into the chat at once. So um, let, let me know, I'm happy to post anything again. Amy, you were on your phone earlier, but I see your face now. You mentioned that you have a supportive administration and uh, other teachers in your school who would be interested in engaging in a climate teaching? Um, we just, I just downloaded some activities that I was looking for. I did the, the climate 
NewYorkCityWeek.org I gave to the teachers. I found something on Easy Science, had a whole little fact sheet and a word find. I found two coloring pictures, one from London that climate change is real and something else about a community. And then yesterday in my kindergarten classes, uh, actually the principal made an announcement in the morning about climate change for the week. I spoke to the librarian, she put up books on the topic. I spoke to the science teachers, mm -hmm. all my colleagues know what's going on. Um, I also found a song about climate change. I just looked it up, like it just came up quick and it's like chopped down the trees. I just sang it with the kindergartners, my two classes, because whatever I get a chance to cover, because I'm the coordinator. So we're doing whatever we can. You know, in between it, it's tough because we are still moving kids into classrooms and pulling out from K to eight. Mm -hmm. We are overwhelmed with a lot of kids. So this is not as forefront we're getting you know every all the programs are everything is coming in at once so i'm just glad that whatever i can do that the school is is very good our custodian is supportive he has knowledge of it and the administration the ap's the principals the science teachers the main teachers they're just happy whatever i i do and so i like uh, the week that you put up i think that's great we do do a lot of doors for different activities so each mm -hmm. time with Earth Week, we do more things, and so maybe we'll incorporate that. Um, I was thinking of like an Echo Fashion Show. I was talking to the music teacher. They have me program with the music teacher. So as soon as, if that doesn't change, then maybe I'll be able to do some things with back and forth with that. So he's game on that. Oh, I was gonna wear my blue, uh, I was gonna wear a butterfly shirt tomorrow and an environmental, we have an environmental shirt and sweatshirts that the whole school has. We did it for Earth Week this past year. So I told the teachers I'm gonna wear my blue shirt. So everyone's on, you know, so it's we, everything we do, we just keep doing it. A lot of kids walk mm -hmm. to school or I've been with the school for a long time. So when I retire, possibly this year, it's gonna change. <laughs> but she's a really good environmental principal. She came from a high school. Her name is Ms. Barone. She's amazing. And Ms. Mavon Bassani is her, one of her APs. We're, we're really lucky to have what we have in our school. She's extremely mm -hmm. supportive of anything we do with the environment. She's done um, uh, the Billion Oyster Project. She's great. Yep, yep. I, I mean, every time we've had this workshop now a few times and every time we host it, I hear ideas from other teachers that I would have never thought of, like having the librarian display climate books. What a good idea. And such a simple thing, unintrusive. If your principal isn't on board, just, you know, putting out there the ideas for kids to start thinking about. Um, I have great climate education books and why not post them in the library? Love it. We really also just love, start from a point of awareness. Yep, and you start one absolutely. thing small and then it just goes. Mm -hmm. I want to look at that padlet. How can I get on that? Because I just. Did you post there... that link or. I, I, I let, me, let me go find it again. On to that. Okay. Um, I think recycled instruments or instruments made from recycled materials is another good idea. Having that with your music kits. Um, great way to engage that class. Uh, an activity that they could do during a climate teaching week. Um, what Al Alyssa did at the High School for Climate Justice is first period, no matter if you were in your math classroom, your ELA classroom, your social studies classroom, everybody did the same activity. But I could also see that you have an ELA activity that all the ELA teachers do when they have kids that day and a music activity that the music teacher does when he sees kids that day. So you can work with your school, with your colleagues, with your administration to figure out how you could get this type of learning into as many different classrooms as you could, whether that's having every student in the school participating in the same activity at the same time, no matter what room they were in, or having every providing curriculum for each subject teacher to use during their scheduled periods that day. Um, I think now the Padlet links in the chat that's been added, so you can check that out. And again, Adam Zaid at the Queen School of Inquiry developed that. We have a quick video, I'm sorry, happy to take more questions, more feedback on things you've tried, things you're curious about. Orlean from the C-STEP program? Yes. Hello, great to see you too. 
Uh, everything's in the presentation material. What I would do to start, you're at a District 75 elementary school, is that right? Um, high school kids, but yeah, District high 75. Mm -hmm. So I would look to uh, the link, sorry, I'm trying to chat and scroll at the same time and I'm doing a horrible job of it. Uh, go to the link that is um, sample teaching ideas. I think there's one in there that is designed for, no, you know what? We're gonna have to go and get uh, one that's designed for District 75 schools. It's not in there right now, but we'll put that in for you. So you don't see that link there right now, but I will retroactively include it in the slide. So you, you know, cause it's Google, it'll update um, and I can share it with you. I have your email address. So I could also share that with you as well. Thank you. But most of those links of resources towards the end all came from Erin who teaches at a District 75 high school. So she has used all of those resources in her classroom at some point or another. So that was things like the World Wildlife Fund and Autobahn and New York Agriculture in the classroom. She has used resources from all of those organizations. Okay, we have a video now, I think, from the Queen's School of Inquiry. Is that available? Yeah, I can show that video. Um, I guess to give you guys a little bit of context for it. So we hold a Youth Climate Summit every year. Um, and last year we had the, the green team from the Queen's School of Inquiry talk about um, how they kind of hosted their own climate teaching the one that Sarah was talking about with Adam Zaid. Um, so yeah, if there aren't any other questions, I'm happy to show the video, a little bit of the video of the students talking about how they approached their green team. All right, I'll share. Okay. And let me know if okay. well, I'd, love, I'd like to introduce the Queen's School of Inquiry Green Team. Thank you. Thank you guys for being here. Um, hi, everyone. We're the Green Team from the Queen's School of Inquiry. Every third Friday of the month, our school dedicates a day to a department to plan activities. So we decided to organize a teaching about several climate related topics. We had a teaching in January in collaboration with the Spanish department of our school. I'll pass the mic on to Sophia. Um, hi everyone, my name is Sophia. Um, we organize our teaching. Okay, wait, hold on. We organize our teaching using this palette that we will use, then we will link in the chat so you can see it. The palette shows the flow of the day. We had seven different workshops and each one was about 20 minutes. Now I'll pass the mic to Charlie who will talk about her topic. Hi, my name is Charlize, and first I would like to say thank you to the DOE Youth Climate Summit because they gave us the space to brainstorm ideas, and because of them, we were able to uh, do the teaching. We chose topics that we were passionate about, and we were able to educate uh, the people here at QSI. So I chose microplastics, and what they are, they're little plastic pieces that can be found in almost anything. They're usually uh, five millimeters or less in size, and um, too much exposure can lead to a heart, brain, lung problems, cancer, infertility, and de de developmental delays in children. I was really interested in this topic because it was just very, I was very curious to know how they could just like, um, like hide in places such as shampoo, electronics, and toys. I'll pass on the mic to Peggy. Hi, I'm Peggy. Hi, I'm Allison. Hi, I'm Kareem. Hi, I'm Leah. So our teaching topic was about fast fashion. We had a passion for fashion. And as, as young teens, we saw how bad the fast fashion industry was getting. We wanted to learn more and share that knowledge with our school. The easiest way for us was to create a video using clips and photos. 
They talked about the problems with fast fashion, such as microfibers. Um, we also wanted our voices to resonate with our peers, so we addressed the issues with our school's merchandise. Our school overproduced. On the slide, you can see some of the things they made. There are shirts, bottles, and even bags. Another thing we did was student interviews to put in the video. We didn't want our presentation to feel like a lecture, so it was important to have some of our, cla some of our classmates that aren't in the green team to speak on the issue as well. It definitely makes it more interesting if you make it more personal to your school, and it encourages uncomfortable co uh, conversations. Um, our video was about 13 minutes long, so we can't show all of it, but we can. Uh, but we have a 30-second clip of it. Um, Pat, can you share the 30? So that's a little bit of the video from the students from the Queen's School of Inquiry. Um, you can check out the rest of that video. Um, I'll share it in the email that's going out tomorrow. But yeah. Well, I love the idea of engaging your schools in the or your students in the process of developing a teach-in for your school. These kids are so passionate. They have, and they they like talking about fast fashion that never would have occurred to me, but yet the environmental impact of having clothes that you can wear for a very short period of time and then throw away is incredible. I was just talking to somebody the other day. I have a Patagonia fleece that somebody gave me, a guy named Boyd Wiedemann gave it to me in 1998. And I have taken it on every trip I have been on for 25 years. And I've had some big trips and it's just as good as it was the day I got it. Um, an incredible company founded by an incredible guy. And that is the opposite of fast fashion. I love that students are thinking about the impact of things like that, things that have meaning to them um, and sharing their ideas about it with their peers. So I'm gonna uh, type my email address into the chat. I'd encourage anybody that has questions or wants to check in about a resource or ideas that they have uh, about a climate teach-in to reach out to me. I can help you as best I can or put you in touch with some of the teachers that have run those climate teach-ins at their schools already. Any questions, anything else, Meredith? You guys wanna say Climate Week continues early in the school year, making it difficult for yeah. all of us, but every week can be climate week, everybody. Yeah, yeah, this is just a great way to get us started. Lots of good ideas, resources here. So thank you so much, Sarah, for sharing your time with us today, sharing all these great resources. Um, like I said, this presentation is recorded, so I'll share out the recording, the base presentation where all these links came from. I'll share those out in email tomorrow. And also I'll share some of the additional things you guys sent me. For example, Orlean showed from X811. She showed, she shared with me a video about how to recycle that they made for their school. So I'll add that in the email too. So thank you all for coming today, sharing your own resources and stories. And yeah, we'd love to see you at our, at our future Climate Week programming. You can learn more about everything coming up here. Let me share that link in the chat. Um, but yeah, if there aren't any other questions, thank you guys so much for coming and we'll hopefully see you later this week and definitely later in the fall for all of our in-person trainings that are coming up, which we're super excited for. They're gonna be great.